Welcome to Inspiration Restoration. In our last episode, we loaded the boat up in Savannah and headed towards Illinois. In this episode, we'll get her unloaded and get to work. Let's go. Two days and 1,400 miles, we've arrived on the mighty Mississippi, Rock Island, Illinois. Shout out to Cross Country Boat Transport out of Hastings, Minnesota. Thanks, Molly, for all the help setting this up and getting this boat moved. Uh, overall weight was 43,500 pounds. Now let's get it in here and get it unloaded. What a difference 1,400 miles makes. If you notice, it was nice when we left. We're back in winter here. If you look in the background, you'll see that the boats are still wrapped. In Illinois and in the Midwest, at least in my part of the Midwest, the boats are shrink wrapped to protect them over the winter. This boat, after it's unloaded, before it goes through the winter, it'll be shrink wrap also. I'm gonna do this video a little bit different. I'm gonna try to narrate it as we're going along. I've sped everything up to try to make it a little bit more tolerable for everybody. Again, this boat's 43,500 pounds as it's loaded right now. Um, that was a little bit of a, an effort to get that done. If you notice, up on the bow, you'll see the windshield. Uh, the windshield had to be removed. The enclosure had to be removed. The flybridge had to be removed. Everything had to be pulled off the boat to get it down to height, to get it from Savannah, Georgia, up to the Quad Cities. All of that will have to be reinstalled. Luckily, there wasn't any damage done to the windshield on the transport. Again, this is a Chris Craft 451. So it's a little over 45 feet in length, 15 for the bow, or I'm sorry, for the beam. Um, and you can see the way that we stored it or transported it. We put the flybridge up on the flush deck and then it hung over onto a platform that was on the trailer. The only problem with that particular setup was if you can see the strap that's kind of keeping pressure on the flybridge. That strap actually did cause quite a bit of pressure up on the flybridge. So we're gonna need to do some damage repair on it. Nothing major, at least nothing major that was caused by the transport. Again, this is a 1973 Chris Craft. So some of that flybridge the outside of the flybridge, not the, the roof, but the outside of the flybridge was delaminating. So we're gonna have to pull her down, get her transported over to the shop, and we're gonna have to rebuild it. The nice thing about that is it makes some nice future episodes. So stay tuned for those. So this is the first day of the unload. Uh, the person that normally does all of the unloads at the marina wasn't here. So we had to just drop it off and then wait for the next day. Next day is a lot sunnier. Um, it's still a little cool, but the normal worker is there again today. So now we're gonna try to pull the flybridge off of the rear of the boat. It's actually been a couple days later. So if you see, what they're gonna do is they're gonna use the forklift and they're gonna use the 
travel lift to lift this up and bring it back off the back of the boat. Kudos to the marina. They did an awesome job. Um, they, they just did great. So in a minute, we're going to get up on top of the bridge. I'm sorry, up on the flush deck. And then you'll get a, a little bit of a look at the fly bridge. And you also, unfortunately, get to see how badly we had to tear down the boat to get it down to height level. Nothing that can't be fixed, but it's going to be some work. A lot of people ask, you know, why we did it this way. We just didn't have any choice. Uh, we were limited to 13.6 to make it up here. You can go a little bit higher and come up some highways. The problem is that is that your route is severely limited and it increases the cost tenfold. So we chose to go ahead since you can see that there's some damage anyway, um, some rotten things. So we knew we were going to have to tear it apart and do some work anyway. So we went ahead and just elected to, to take it off, bring it down to the, the level of the bottom of the windshield and adjust from there. Um, you'll see inside that we actually had to bring the dash down and off also the helm. You can see right now that the helm's temporarily set back on but it had to come down below the, the level of the windshield also. Uh, what you didn't get to notice if you saw the last episode, what you didn't get to notice or see was that as we were bringing it out of Savannah, the tree coverage there, the canopy is so low that when we came out of the marina, we only made it up about 50 foot before we were tangled up in the trees. Um, it took to go a mile it literally took about two hours. Uh, what ended up happening, I ended up having to climb up on top of the boat and lift the limbs up and over as we passed each and every tree. Uh, if we'd have been another two inches higher, we wouldn't have made it out of Savannah. Uh, so sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Now you can see the flybridge. You can see inside that the benches, they're not in, in too bad a shape. But again, overall, it's a 50 year old boat and it's been sitting down open to the elements down in Savannah, Georgia. It's gone through countless hurricanes and you can see that there's just some weathering that's done inside. So we could elect to just fix what we've got, but I think what we're going to do is, is actually completely rebuild the flybridge and change it up a little bit. So again, that'll be some interesting videos in the future. So at this point what you're seeing is is Chad and Joe and myself lifting the back of the flybridge up so we can get the straps under it. Um, it was actually supported on the sides with with these two by fours and so the flybridge wasn't actually setting completely on top of the flush deck didn't want to damage it anymore and we had to and as it is we uh, didn't end up doing any damage to the flush deck at all so what they're trying to do is is get the rope underneath it and so that they can lift it they'll tie it off on the travel lift and then they'll lift it and then pull it off As you can see inside the helm, the controls, everything's been disconnected so that the controls and the helm itself could be pulled down. That's all located inside the boat. So now that we're ready, we're rigged. Now we're gonna go down on the ground and, and take a look. And we're gonna come back to the back and let the pros handle it from here. Sorry about the little bit of the wobbling on the camera. Um, set up a new camera this time. We now have a, a GoPro along with our other camera. Uh, this is the first time I used it. 
I think we're going to change this up a little bit. In, in this video, we strapped it to my chest. Uh, and it's a little bit too bumpy. Uh, each step, you can see what I'm doing. So I think I'm going to change the location of that and see how it works. So what Chad's up there doing now is he's checking to see there's a air conditioner unit that's located up in the in the bridge and the control for that air conditioning unit is hanging down into the the skylight of the stateroom so what we're trying to do is make sure that there's nothing that's going to get hung up as the bridge comes off last thing that we want to do is have something get hung up and pull it off of the forks of the the forklift So at this point, my stress level is through the roof, but here we go. We're going to lift it and see if we can't take it back down. It's a tense moment in any way, shape, or form. Here we go. Professionalism and experience wins every time. They make it look easy. We're going to give you a bird's eye view. In the background, you can see all the boats that are shrink wrapped. We're looking at uh, the 1st of April. I think it was April 7th when we got up here um, or we unloaded it. So in Illinois, it's still quite cold. So we've got another several weeks before winter really goes away and spring moves in. So you're just starting to see a few boats taking the shrink wrap off. We probably won't get any more snow this year, but it's still pretty cool. And you just never know. We could get snow for another couple weeks, so most boats will set covered for a while. My anxiety level was high here, but it didn't seem to bother the guys at work for the marina. Clearly they've done this before. Shout out to Chad and Joe for making a hard job look easy. Once it gets on the ground, they'll crib it up and then I'll make arrangements to have it picked up and move to my shop. Stay tuned. In future episodes, we'll go through what the bridge needs and decide which direction that we're going to go with it. So as you can see, it's dirty. Um, but you will see that the pressure that was put on the rub rail up on top 
it, it took a toll. You might notice that the two boats sitting next to me are also crisscross, both of them 41s. Thanks again for watching the video. New episodes are coming up. Stay tuned for next week's episode where we work on the boat a little bit and I'll give you some more updates. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to leave us some comments. Thanks.